Bonjour à tous, merci d'être venus avec nous. Nous retrouver. Alors nous avons la chance d'avoir. Hello everybody and thank you very much. Uh, we've William got Klaas. two specialists of William Klaas work, Raphael Stepan, Florence Tissot are here with you today. So I'm introducing them, Raphael Stepan. The lab is director of the Photographic Center in Normandy, an exhibition uh, person in chief, and she did with William Charles. Uh, she worked with the studio in Madrid and Barcelona, and even in Seoul. Florence Tissot, commissioner for the Cinematic Process Exhibition. We can talk about the exhibition. Cinema, par exemple, Gauthier, Kevin Martin, Chris Marker, all three exhibition that allowed them to meet William Klan. So for people who do not know, I will remind you quickly the work of William Klan, born in 2000. Just a minute, I've lost it. Yes, William Klein, born in 26 in New York, precocious uh, as a child, he came in 47 in Paris, where he married Jean, and he worked for a long time with Jean, and he's got a friendship with Chris Marker and He was known through his book in New York in 2006. He becomes a photograph of both for Vogue and for Roger Bylight in 58. And then he had a few films for reporting programs. He was imposed as a film director with Bobby Magu, Formidable Plastic Splendor, and all his films had a lot of political certification for fiction and documentaries. So, quickly, Raphael, maybe we can talk about Chris Marker because we need to remind you that he was a publisher in, say, publishing houses. Hello, everybody. William Klein is going to be Chris Marker at the time of the publication of his book, New York. So we're going to see a few slides, and I'm going to stop on this work, which is very much very important. The first, the first publication time that was done in a very interesting fashion for his first project when he comes back to the USA in order to what we consider firstly as a portrait of the city of New York, and we can see here that it means it is his first month that is dealing straight with the media. That's the theme of our current conversation. And in order to do this project that was made in 54, 55, over three months for taking the pictures, the filming, William, who was American, was already resident in Paris for several years, and he's going to come back through the invitation in New Bermard in New York, and he's going to do this masterwork because he was uh, lodged by Vogue and he had access to the lab and to the equipment. And he started by inventing over there a new way of taking pictures, the filming, by knowing that something maybe which we haven't evoked yet as a preamble. The fact that William Klein starts with photo and art, uh, contrary to what some of his contemporary people are doing and celebrating, uh, but there are photographers by training. He didn't want to invite a new career. William wanted to start through the art of painting and it's going to recondition his rapport with the world of photography because he's going, he didn't have to unlearn a few things uh, and he had to be able to freely start with photography and you see it witnessed in the book with a lot of accidents. He made a lot of accidents, uh, incidents. He had a new will to go 
doing, to the framing, uh, a kind. He twisted the normal habits that were linked with the normal conventional filming that was done to use the wide angle for all the filming shots. And right from the beginning, he wanted to do the book photography and is going to do the. Uh, draft, you wanted to do the print, and we wanted to show you the documents that were not very well done, but not in the book, and the blueprint of the book that was made originally, that was shown to recently during the retrospective exhibition. Finally, it can witness the research that was done by William on the, the inclusion within the aim of the book to avoid the aspect to the daily life in particular, as well, to incorporate the presence of the media, the ad uh, advertisement uh, in the urban life that marks the life of the Yorkers that was already photographed in the early years of the 1920s by various photographers. And he put it in the blueprint of the book, and within that, the daily portrait of daily life. And then uh, he will publish it, and he will publish quite a few books dedicated to other big cities, so it's almost considered that it's a portrait of New York. But it was really the first time that he was dealing with this new way of doing things regarding the media society. And it was very interesting to see that it was a prime um, way of doing things with the world of photography, and he's going to describe the media companies, the media world, and he's going to do it fully. And that's what you can see here is the layout of the railway part that was done initially by William, and it is within this item that he was able to come to the threshold in order to act as the unconscionable. Uh, he was able to support the project uh, fully, and we talked about the first meeting that was struck him, really, because they arrived at an office, as he described it before, like Roland, not the others, with the plastic pistol uh, at the belt. He was wearing at the belt, and Mark, uh, he had that little collection within, say, which is called La Petite Planète, a little planet, dedicated to countries or city, and it's going to take, it's going to take it under his week, this project, and it's going to be really part of it in order to make it in the most faithful version according to William's wishes. So that project really was uh, something that had an immediate, uh, made an immediate noise about William and his Just this speaking, uh, the name of Chris Masker, we can retake that and talk about the photography because with this meeting of Chris Masker, we were able to do it, uh, and uh, we could do it as well. Uh, and uh, it was him as well that was able to do it with his friend, that was able to show Alain René's friend. Uh, and effectively, it was uh, very important because they were young filmmakers and they didn't, uh, they, they were able to do short films, 16 millimeters documentaries in order to see, uh, to, to produce or self-produce their own films and they were able to do it. Uh, in order to create a cooperative a production. And it is true that's the way uh, to do it is going to make it a legitimate the work of William Klein because he was saying at the time, why not me? So effectively, it is in 58 that he started to do it, the first work, uh, and he was able to show La René and uh, to carry on. And he was able to uh, do it, uh, and it was something uh, very important regarding the look, regarding the film of New York, because it was uh, done, uh, the filming, and it was everything was set in motion, set in place, like a little bit like as if New York was 
thought as an imaginary scene, and it's not surprising that it was something, I have to say, like Chris Parker, something that was done quickly for this film, because effectively it was the first book that was done, because Chris Marker was a man who was a, a uh, and a man was doing a bit of everything. Uh, he was uh, editing a college collection, a bit of that, which was a travel guide, and he read, did everything in full with the travel guide. And he had vision, a totally new vision from a publishing point of view that was considered as an artist a piece of work in full. And Chris Marker was saying a lot of things regarding William Clines because effectively within the series, uh, uh, we can feel the influence of the cinema. And within the films and movies of Chris Marker, we can see the uh, influence of that. And it was the same case for uh, William Clines because these two are they were able, had to say, they were able to feel the different artistic categories, the traditional, conventional ones, in order to make networks, to make links with different support. And I believe that really it had that common vision of the art, which was the very sacred, because within the imaginary, they were able to do it, and we could see the painting at the museum, the paintings of the cartoons, the the Greek uh, uh, painting and the cinema. So effectively, it was the idea to do so, to, to see the multidisciplinarity, multi different functions within the discipline of the artist. Uh, and it, we could see it in the very multifunction one. And it was done on the aesthetics point of view, but at the same time, we can see that it was from a political standpoint, because when William meets Chris Marker and Alain Rena in order to make the movie, which was the status of the marks of the brands in 53, it was noting the presence of the African presence, and we were thinking a lot about the notion of negritude, and within this film, uh, we were where they were talking quickly and working quickly in a different fashion, why the Afro-Americans are, ex are exhibited in the Musée de l'Homme in France, but not in the USA. So it was different political affinities compared to Anis Bernard, because it's very important to see their look, because they're very modern, contemporary, and in the 28th, like Chris Marker, they have the desire to, to put some distance with their and family within the milieu where with, with values that they didn't know. And at the same time, they had a lot of humor, of course. Uh, and uh, of course, the idea of a moving, it was first of all an experimentation, it was a career path. We are much further away from, I would say, through post films, Chapel's films, which are doing a long film once a year within the cinema with different personalities, different stars uh, um, that don't want to have the full powers and Klein and all their clique, uh, what we call today, uh, uh, the Reforge in Paris, uh, uh, clique, uh, there is a community of spirit amongst the young people, uh, for people who are doing everything, jack of all trade, in order to, uh, to do it on the left. Uh, so uh, effectively, it was a little bit within this environment and milieu that we were uh, that client was able to to start with camera work. Just the, uh, effectively, now we are going to talk about Klein as a film director, uh, Puli Magu. So effectively, it's a movie that effectively did its a kind of report with a different art, which was not seen as very noble at the time, uh, Puli Magu, uh, for the uh, idea, political idea that was done. But even beyond that, it was a film that was denouncing, that was blaming the society of shows a show society of uh, uh, can we talk a little bit further about the film uh, yes at Polimagu effectively um, it's something which is finally very different within the career of uh, William Klein because it's the film that arrived as we said 10 years after doing uh, photos of uh, mode uh, 
uh, photos of uh, models and everything with the collaboration that used to go back up to 55 always with Alexander Lipperman that he put forward on this terrain of experimentation. But I'm saying not against him, but he was doing it as a not really as a career path, but he just did it. And effectively, uh, he's going to go for it to go fully for it with a lot of pleasure, having a lot of pleasure because he used to call it uh, the bridge photography because it was something where uh, he could experiment, he could have access to equipment, to hardware, uh, something he wouldn't have dealt with normally within the same kind of area, decor and uh, putting everything. So that's what he was doing. He's going effectively to do it quickly in companionship with Marka, another film directors in order to get started, to use it as a trampoline, to become a full uh, film director. And on top of that, beyond this experience of uh, fashion photography, there is the fact that uh, he used uh, to go through the ORTF, the French National TV Network, and he used to go through that, and he used to have a few problems with the censorship with the French uh, official network, and it used to create a, a kind of spectrum of attention, unwanted attention, uh, regarding the mechanics of the system of uh, uh, fashion and the big uh, TV networks that were in development at the time. And what you can see at the screen here, it's a few photos that we selected specifically because you can see a Dolimansko one here. And uh, the, uh, the model for Berg uh, that was uh, taken a lot in photos by William Klein, and that's the one he chose in order to incarnate uh, Polimaco because the film in itself uh, is going to. Uh, he's going to do it like that, and he's going to go forward and backwards into reality and fiction. Who are you, Puli Magu? And I'm going to try to s summarize it because it's a big one from Puli Magu, for example, which is a top model, a superstar, is consecrated, is uh, uh, has a show uh, to do it within the show, which is Puli Magu, and uh, every a week or every month, I can't remember, she had a different personality from left to right, right to left, up to bottom, bottom to top. And we could see this young person, this young woman becoming the object of a study of several bodies, uh, namely the TV network team and uh, the TV team network is, uh, is going to go to an anthropologist, uh, ethnologist, in order to see the system of uh, fashion and the media and the analysis we can draw from it. So it's full of sense because it's very complex as a subject matter. And we can see within the foot series of photos, within the walls of photos uh, on, in his bedroom. We can see uh, the film here. We can see Poli taking the poor post within the Parisian bedroom with the wall uh, covered in photos. And we can see the poor post she took. Uh, and we can discover new photos, new fashion photos that were made by William Klein himself. So once again, but through this gesture, William Klein was able to, uh, to be fully part of the media circus that occurred at the time and he was blaming it in a very tenderly and caustically fashion and we reduced the film to effectively a satire of fashion. Um, he said it very well and it is a subject matter which is very complex in itself because we can see namely for example in several sets of uh, filming that was done and we can see the item, the TV, we can see the actors that can be found again within the TV, and we can see thoroughly the description, um, the real neatly done description that was hot news at the time, as we can see today. It was TV reality in a way at the time, and that was the description that was done through the civilization, the reflection, there's a beautiful article 
façon that was done uh, uh, when the uh, film was shown at the society that produced on only a self-study, a sterile self-study in itself. And we could see uh, we, we can still have further analyze that. We can still go into further depth. And what we can see here are photos uh, uh, that were done on the set, uh, and they're mixed within some filming shots that were taken beside the back to put the TV team. He, he put as well fashion models with different photographers, uh, fashion photographers, and they're going to deal with it, namely Louis Ferrara, and it's very very funny to see that on the roofs of the Paris Opera, where William Klein is amused and it's playing uh, with all the photos, fashion photos that were done in this environment. Effectively, what was very, we often produce content, this film in a very costly view of the fashion world at the time, because it's full of savor, of course, and effectively, he paints a, a professional milieu, professional context, which is very excessive in itself and ridiculous, but the ridiculous to the extreme and through the different protagonists, uh, namely, uh, the people in charge of the editorial, the megalomaniac people, the uh, haute couture, uh, the philanthropists, the clients uh, who were over enthusiastic, uh, all that in the collective series, it was done. He had uh, um, a more nuanced discourse on fashion because this film effectively that is telling the story of TV and is doing uh, an, um, a shot on the models to represent the fashion industry, the shooter specialist. Uh, so Klein effectively had the definite portrait of the fashion world, but at the same time, namely there's a sociologist who was saying that uh, because he was very nervous, he had glasses, he had a jumper and everything, but he was defining the fashion world as a kind of fetishism, a mutilation that was done, that was the way we're describing. So Klein effectively was doing it in the same passage where he gave the floor to uh, the commentators, a little bit senior commentators, and not to know why they were legitimate to talk about the fashion world. Uh, and we were talking about Javier Stabu, for example. She was a journalist uh, from the Resistance, uh, and she was, uh, we had stars uh, like Anna Duke, who was behind her, and uh, that was very different. And effectively, the three commentators, a little bit older, they used to criticize uh, the fashion, namely Courage Cardin, which was a fashion done differently, a tubular fashion, and a little genie, the community, community. And he couldn't redo the look at the general proportion of the women who was in fashion before, because before they used to use the corset by multiplying the critiques that were done within the film. So effectively, we understand fully the fashion world, but at the same time, he wanted to, to organize it, uh, and he wanted to do it uh, comprehensively on all the uh, landscape area at the fashion world. And it was the uh, only one that, uh, it was only Polimago that escaped the severe critiques because there was a misogynistic point of view that was shared by all the analysts, the protagonists who used to paint in a very ferocious way, uh, even more than the uh, TV teams, more than the creator, fashion creator. Maybe we're going to have an, uh, an excerpt of Polimago. These are photos. It's very urgent. That's it. Bye bye. Divine. DV. Divine. Divine. 
What is it? I'm a, I'm a couturier. I'm going to rearrange your dress. The queen of Polly, a fragile baby, stop. Bia gave Bia a lemon helps to improve the skin. How to do it? If your nose is delicate and small, and if the nostrils are capable of moving like a horse, you are very lucky. Your mouth is big, well drawn. Avec les coins légèrement relevés. With the upper corners going up, is your face within a circle? Everything round is good. The eyebrows is uh, frame your eye. You can find your face more balanced and you can redraw shadows and light. And that's what makes your look your face. Your eyes are feeling a lot of things. In the wink, they can say everything. So we're going to stay maybe within here to uh, blame the society, show society, uh, the Mr. Fried. The witness couples, two of the films we're talking about, Klein. Maybe we're going to talk about it, uh, that emblem, because uh, this extract is very important regarding uh, the official narrative of Klein. And here we can see a film that is describing things, people are moving fast, uh, it's very dynamic films, it's made of very different items, but just these excerpts can show something which is very different. We can start with uh, a burlesque shot with the explosion in the chimney, the follow-up uh, with the face, uh, the different things which are shown by the magazine team and everything. Thing, uh, the pursuit that was done, the papers uh, on the floor, uh, the magazine, we can really see it's burlesque here and we can see it fully. And just after that, uh, following up, we can see a sequence which is very hybrid in itself between the ad. Uh, and uh, the psychologist, uh, if I don't know how to say it, uh, during which uh, uh, we can see after that, um, the film is done as such with the support and superimposed by drawings, by photo collage, and we can see within the register of experimentation how it's done for the TV filming. And we are done in a kind of stylistic bulimia, which is very lovely, but not great usually done in order to tell the excess of the fashion mode, fashion society, show society, and Klein invent as something which is a bit of a cacophony uh, by sweeping away everything uh, within the fiction. And uh, it was a very formal and it was done, uh, done in a very coherent way. Uh, and it was very intricate. Uh, uh, reality was brought into with the very intricate uh, fashion, um, and it was something, a kind of UFO way of doing it, a kind of fiction work, uh, which was very different, uh, like a fairy by depicting, uh, uh, depicting something uh, being as a false documentary. It was a very precursor film that described a lot about society, and it was very, in itself, uh, a new invention that was done.
C'est intéressant parce que cette hybridité-là, elle était déjà en germe dans le livre de New York où, où il y avait vraiment des couples pages qui faisaient très cartoon, d'autres qui se référaient davantage au tabloïd. Il y avait vraiment cette, cette envie énoncée d'emprunter de, 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 vraiment une esthétique. Ben, il, lui, il parlait souvent du Daily News, quoi, qui était aussi le, le journal dans lequel, par exemple, Luigi euh, travaillait. Et donc, cette... Euh, cette imprégnation comme ça, c'est la culture de l'imprégnation de différentes médias qui ont été représentées dans la narrative, dans la coïncidence chaotique fashion, avec le polymaco, par exemple, le registre qui a été fait dans les nouvelles, les nouvelles TV séries qui ont été inspirées par les chars de Brown avec la version qui a été fait dans le point de vue de la View. So effectively, it was done all together, one on top of the other, and we had the recourse, of course, to, to the various photo shots that was done in the street without any filter, without setting. So it was playing on all the register, yes, of course, and there was the scene, for example, full of saver, of uh, Sammy Frey that was done uh, with a handshake uh, in a in a fashion mode, uh, and he bombarded it within uh, uh, a show in the 65 where he, he had a group of a former a veterans, a war veterans, and during uh, the shot he was doing it. Uh, after the 11th of November. So all of it effectively was juxtaposed uh, on top of the other, and it was said as such in that time. Yes, it was new, new totally new, I agree with you. And effectively, uh, we had that kind of look in the mirror, but it was telling us a lot about the theme, which was very important within the film that comes back in other films regarding the show society and within a kind of reflection of the world of uh, show people. And at the same time, the instrumentalizations when you're when you become an instrument, uh, um, and it was uh, that then as a sequence, uh, like Poli Magu, when she's harassed in the street, when she's got the TV teams at her place. Uh, so effectively, when we can see today, we can see a little bit more like in Paris photo, because we can see more photographers and there are more ladies photographers. So I think it's a movie which is on the right side, of course, this film, effectively. So, Sinon, on peut passer à Mr. Frédéric. On pourrait parler de Polymago toute la nuit, mais on, on va quand même essayer de, de faire de la place à, à, à la suite. Euh, donc, euh, oui, euh, le Mr. couple Frid témoin et Mr. Freedom. Mr. Freedom, c'est un film qu'il réalise euh, un petit peu plus tard, qui tourne en 1968, et dans le, un, un peu dans la, dans la foulée et un petit peu en réaction euh, à un autre euh, un film collectif qui s'appelle Loin du Vietnam. Qui, qui, qui est so we have a film Far From Vietnam, a project that was done by Chris Marker, and it was uh, very different from the US hegemony and war uh, in Vietnam. Uh, and it was very different. Uh, uh, it was a sketch that was done differently, and it was the broadcast as such, and it was an important contribution because it was a strong time. Uh, and at the same, it was a little bit as a reaction to this project to which uh, Godin and Josie Ben took part. They decided to make a moving film on the same topic, a film that would be full of color, that would uh, be a kind of comedy, uh, that would be inspired from the different uh, cartoons world, uh, going through the simplicity of the cartoon way of doing it. To talk about this topic, but while laughing while doing it, and we had the dialogue costumes, uh, and we had everything, and it was done uh, uh, in a very simple fashion. Uh, through the comic, uh, through the uh, cartoon world, and it was uh, Charles Gainsbourg was working on it, and it was a Delphine Siri who was a friend of William Clance in the USA. She was very close to it, uh, and she put it uh, all together, and she 
reacted a bit like a double agent, and she was using it in a total different world, going through against mainstream uh, way of doing it. And it was a movie, a film that was done um, differently, and there was a kind of Superman in the shot that was sent to Paris in France to save France from the communist world. And at the same time, he wanted to say that it was, uh, I would think about simplicity, but uh, the, the US embassy was the supermarket, the consumerism uh, was very, very active, and Trump was still in power when I met William Klein. He was saying that it's a kind of Superman that gives his own ideology regarding the sharing, who, who was very condescending and everything. So it was uh, effectively a kind of figure that was very uh, dangerous and still uh, today in topic. Uh, uh, and it's a film that resonates a lot, uh, even today, because within its form, we could find a lot of things within the movie making. We can find it in all the full senses of the meaning. And I believe that Chris Marker had a project, a very important project that was done like a little bit like Star Trek, where the spaceship would arrive near Earth. Uh, and we, we, we could see aesthetically, we want to laugh because it's popular form reuse as such. Uh, and, and it was done post May 68. There are also scenes of the demonstrations in May 68. The scene of May Campus View. This, um, this film and the, to, to a testimonial of the events of 68. Just a word on Couple on the denunciation of the show is society. Couple de Moi is a film of 77 with two main actors, André Dussolier and Anne Mann, who embody a couple of standard French people. And uh, they are in a standard apartment in Paris under the gaze of a uh, sort of psycho psychologist called psychofuturologist who was still in the register of exaggeration of humor. And uh, the main subject uh, is uh, the impact of capitalism, the program happiness, the uniformization of desire, the growth, and how this uh, showbiz society is organized with the main dominant media such as television experts or pseudo-experts, which uh, try to standardize our dreams, our desires, our ways of life, and which are in a very instrumentalized discourse by politicians with the liberal objectives to planify productivity. That's the subject. And so it resonates still today a lot with um, the same questions, the same issues with the meat, with the social networks, and uh, this um, anticipates the, um, the rise of uh, the, the social media and uh, this idea that we can have of our reality being disillusioned in a pseudo life programmed by industries, cultural industries. So this is a film which stays very, very current and contemporary, and very pleasant to see. I think we have um, extracts of the two films. Here Hello. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we are proud and deeply moved. We present to you tonight for the first time in Europe, it is all stars, one man, oh, Mr. Free, Mr. Free, Mr. Free, Nous allons créer un centre urbain pilote, un CUP conçu pour que vous ayez été satisfait. Vous avez donc été choisi pour les usagers types de l'an 2000. Nous voulons connaître en fait vos désirs, vous voulons mesurer le potentiel de votre personnalité sociale et de votre vie. Social integration, basic integration, chosen citizens of 2000, we will help brands. Come down now and speak with numbers. With numbers. So, three, 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 twenty-two. Thank you. Ok, alors je crois que l'heure tourne, donc on va maintenant aborder notre dernier prochain chapitre. So, time's passing, so we're going to get into the next big chapter, the representation of the communities which were rendered invisible, the apparent community and their civil rights, and we have chosen to uh, focus on the film Mohamed Ali. Effectivement, donc. Indeed. Dans son engagement politique, William Trump a. Political commitment, William Klein will position himself quite early as uh, a voice of the black American community in cinema representation by filming up to 64. Mohamed Ali, qui était à l'époque encore uh, middle size hein, film on Mohamed Ali, who would uh, convert to Islamism one year later. And uh, he did his first film. By bouncing back to the whole black American community, to which he is given a face, because we're talking about the community rendered invisible, to take a contemporary term, and so it is a very media figure to be interested in, and this media figure was also modeled by the system. So he will denounce this build-up image. So the film. Is made with the second part added to the first one, which testifies of the fight against Orman in Chasa. And so sets up Mohamed Ali, who has become a victim of the media. At the time, because he was a friend and an activist at the Black Panthers movement, and uh, became this strong and powerful voice for the defense of civil rights and a voice of the Black community, contrary to what the media system was doing, trying to constrain and in this um, very more formatted image at the end of uh, the sixth. So this film will be a big film on Ali. Yes, um, we find there also a style which is, um, how would I put that, um, camera on the shoulder, 
Klein is going close to the people that is filming, he's always in movement, he doesn't hesitate to do big plans. And so we are in this uh, very impactful aesthetic and uh, takes a vantage point that he likes. Uh, which is uh, the backstage and um, repetitions and during rest time so preparation for combat makes the portrait of this character which is um, sort of a soldier who's uh, never afraid and uh, never shows a gratitude to those white people who put in there so a kind of a rebel figure who will refuse to go to vietnam with a very famous formula no Vietnamese uh, ever called me nigger, uh, which is a commitment that cost him his career. And so he's doing this uh, strange portrait. I think Bob, in general, boxing in general, beyond this personal experience, is a sport and also a show that attracted him very much because it uh, included a lot of people from different social layers and generates a lot of uh, favors. And what he's able to do beyond this portrait is going forward to see those people who are the authorities, the mafia, some people with uh, false language that he arrives to show according to his own language, Boxing fighters uh, ask people who would uh, invest in horses, and it's a strong language that resonates still today when we talk about communities and the way we are representing them and all the social moments uh, which are still ongoing. Yes, there, there is this parallel that we can do between uh, the figure of Mohamed Ali and the figure of Oli, who also was a famous person who was polarizing all the attention of the society towards them. And going um, back to the extra of Poli with all the opposing faces, it's a literal setup of the transfer that we can do over to this figure, so beyond the, the person itself, it's also a portrait of uh, in the United States, the complex product of the American society in the 60s, 70s. We're going to now watch an excerpt from Mohamed Ali. Dancing and jabbing, I look like Sugar Ray. Pop, pop, cooking. 
jabbing and left hooking. Jabbing and left hooking. Yeah, I'm a pretty fighter. I don't get it. See how pretty smooth I am? I don't get cut or marked. I'm something new. The game's alive. What new things in the day? The reporters got something to write about. Mm, the cantina man's gonna make money. The popcorn man's gonna make money. The beer man's gonna make money. The town is alive. This is the biggest sport. I'm participating in the biggest sport that ever took place in the whole wide world. Nothing is as great as me. The biggest thing in the world is a heavyweight champion. And I'm not just going to be ordinary heavyweight champion. I'm going to be the greatest of all. Donc là, on arrive à la fin de notre discussion. So que discussion de Paris Photo, est-ce que vous voulez so parler de Paris Photo Would you like to talk about the offspring of uh, William Klein's works uh, on the contemporary est, stage est um, about the posterity of his work? It's um, alors, so much bigger. Si on en revient donc à, à ce début, go back ce, to ce, his beginnings and to this York, famous en fait, book um, in New York, il y a eu un retentissement uh, simultané uh, à la immediate bounce uh, at its très, um, publication, uh, international, which was strong uh, and international. So this book marked des, the whole generation of uh, the 50s. There was a recently retrospective done et, by Van der Koken. And we could see that, for example, a that photographer would uh, at this time want to do William Klein. There is a better of uh, names following William Klein. I, I'm not sure we have to put them all, but since he has done the photography of those books and um, The book as an object of um, an object of democracy. It could go from hand to hand, and uh, the whole photography scene was different. And the book from, was for him an object towards which he wanted to go since always. And by this medium, he was able to diffuse. Uh, a way without taking into account uh, the conventions and it's uh, some sort of uh, very strong graphic signature and uh, with much, um, this uh, had an impact on photographic creation and um, it's something that they considered as revolutionary. And I'd say that uh, we still to be, have to be paying attention today to the fact that, for example, retrospective or, or encounters like this, uh, we can also put them up front to give an image um, which is more complex uh, and um, aussi en tant que photographe finalement il a embrassé ce ce système de la photographie et comment il a appris this vraiment fortement system while posing himself to it and his photography was a lot of photography use of course it's a play but it's not all play comme il a fait par exemple au grand soir petit matin ou d'autres in this direct building, like a grand matin, where he comes with his camera, putting it just uh, in front of people that we do not hear. And uh, there's this um, idea of uh, never having enough of reality of absorbing of um, devoration. And I find it c'est très contemporain, ce work. Si on considère justement cette époque dans laquelle on est, on est back, to think about this year in which we are, with thinking about artificial alternative realities, etc. This work shows us we do not waste the real. And uh, it's a matter, it's a raw matter. With... 
Ça fait partie des, de, des derniers what you see on the screen it's uh, one of the last works by William Klein that you know which are also on the backstage of the uh, moment where he comes to gather all his human practices, photography practices, and this gesture of the painter that uh, comes back at the end of this work is that a word, Florence, on the uh, the lecteur j'en ai who has such a big role and focus here. It's um, the respect to William Klein, this uh, reverence and in, in which he recognizes himself, uh, the enfant terrible of the fashion, a dressmaker who has played with transgression, would it be transgression of uh, the taste of the standards of gender by going and finding inspiration at the street in the popular culture? Il a vu chez, euh, chez Klein euh, bon, quelque chose qui, euh, euh, pas qui lui ressemble, mais en, en, en tout cas euh, avec, vers le, enfin, avec qui euh, un peu s'identifier, euh, ayant lui-même été un peu euh, joué avec un peu la marge euh, et, le, et le renouvellement de, voilà, de, de, de la mode. Mais euh, alors je sais qu'il y a eu un, aussi un, une, une citation ou une, une revisitation de Klein dans le dernier ou l'avant-dernier défilé de, de Chanel. Moi, je ne connais pas les... Euh, I do not know the link of Virginie Biard with Klein and how it was being able to do it and how we could do it within the photography, but in any case, uh, we could see and we think that the fashion is a big machine. As uh, effectively, there is something like that, but I don't say that the expression was done as such, uh, and it was always done as such. And we have to pay tribute to Klein. Effectively, for him, I had to say the clairvoyance and the style and the irreverence, irreverence of it. Uh, all of it makes it as a masterpiece, which is very contemporary, but as such a talent, a masterpiece to which he likes to refer and to pay a tribute uh, as of today. Thank you very much. We're going to finish with Jean-Paul Cloutier making a link with William Klein, and I hope that you're going to be able to see again this masterpiece. And thank you very much to all of you, and thank you for all of you. Thank you. Bye-bye.